Okay, we've all heard about oil catch cans or oil separators on Broncos and any other vehicles, for example. You ever wonder where they come from and how they're made? And why should you have one? Well, in this video, we're gonna cover that and we're gonna show you our little trip at JNL OSC and figure out how all of this was made and put into this box. Check out this video. All right, so meet Vinny with JNL OSC. Dwayne, great to have you and uh, your subscribers here to check out our uh, business. Got the JNL OSC sign right up there. So yeah, one thing that was amazing is, uh, you know, I drove all the way across Chesapeake to get here. It's not like I had to pack a bag and fill the tank up, right? But I appreciate you letting me come over here and look at this because there's a lot of people want to know, do I need an oil separator? And we'll go inside where it's less noisy and less wind blowing to talk about that. How long have you been around? Uh, a handful of years now. We've been making oil separators for the better part of 10 years. Um, so uh, we really enjoy what we do and helping people uh, make their vehicles last longer. And you concentrate on oil, uh, oil separators. Now. That's Actually, oil do. separator, oil catch can, uh, tomato, tomato. Tomato, tomato. Uh, yeah. There you yeah. go. Because someone in the comments will say, hey, it's not what it's called. But there's yeah. two different references to it. Absolutely. And, you know, the biggest thing about doing a product review, you get to unbox it and do that part of it and you get to install it. I think there's another thing when you actually get to see it boxed up. Where does your parts come from? And to me, that's a big deal. So, Vinny, who needs a, a catch can or an oil separator? Uh, the short answer is anybody and everybody. <laughs> um, every vehicle's got a PCB system, and majority of them work all the same. Whether it's a performance car, like a 700 horsepower GT500, or a 300 horsepower 27 Bronco, or a Toyota Camry, the right. PCB systems all work very similar. Um, some vehicles can benefit more than others. Got it. And how you drive it? How much, if so if it's boosted, mm -hmm. the harder you drive it, the more boost you're creating, the more blow-by you have, right? Absolutely. The, the more yep. vapor that is gonna enter the crankcase, which ends up through the PCV system, which then gets... Absolutely, there, there's a lot of variables that can affect the collection rate on a lot of them. Uh, towing, how you drive it, performance right. side. Um, sometimes just the amount of interstate driving you do versus city driving can affect the collection in it. So the long-term effects of having oil residue, right, atomized, I guess, for lack of a better word, sure. the oil leaving uh, the crankcase and entering into the intake, especially with direct injection Correct. engines. What's the long-term effect on that? So long-term effect, especially on direct injection engine, is the, the carbon and then the valve coating buildup you'll get on the intake valves that will affect performance, um, not only performance, but reliability, longevity, um, efficiency over the, the life of the vehicle. Yeah, and I think long-term people have even heard the word walnut blasting. Mm -hmm. If your engine gets coated and enough crud ends out of it, and uh, walnut blasting is gonna be in your future, and I think it's pretty expensive to do that. Oh, very much so. You're pulling intake manifold off of it, yeah. which is uh, typically not a very small job on many models, not only paying for the service, but your your average on a 2.7 or a 3.5 EcoBoost, I would anticipate that to be five to 700 bucks. Uh, yeah. per service and and I think uh, and we'll see we're going to actually uh, install in a separate video um, our catch can and we're going to see in between our 5,000 mile intervals and oil changes how much oil we actually collect also the uh, altitude where you where you're from how much moisture is in the area what's the temperatures right what's the temperatures yeah big time so there's all sorts of stuff depending on what part of the country you're in the temperature the moisture what ends up in the can yeah right um, and so we're going to be able to do a follow-up video on this to say, hey, this was our 5,000 miles and here's how we drive. You know how we drive it and it's based on MPG um, and how much oil is in there. And I would suspect that engines aren't exactly the same, right? You, you know, you, you have 100,000 2.7s built. I'm sure some have more than others, even if you drove them exactly the same. Oh, absolutely. The, the, the joke that we always say here in the office is like it matters if you're your engine was built on a Tuesday or a Friday sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but just as you see everything else with mass manufacturing, um, you know, some of these early 2.7s, not necessarily in a Bronco, had oil pan issues. Other of them, other of them had turbo issues. Things things change in, in different build dates and things sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. Sorry, I get that little shiny squirrel thing going on once in a while and I just happened to look. This is similar to what we're going to be looking at today, actually being uh, the bracket being um, uh, made. Um, or at least finished up and yep. everything put into a box. So the catch can um, 
is you can buy extensions, mm -hmm. but based on how you drive, what you drive, and your intervals, whether you need it or not, right? Right, yep. So the base, um, we call this the 3.0 because it holds three ounces of fluid. When you add the extension, that will extend you down to up to six ounces, okay. um, which is a great way for people that want to make it their entire oil change uh, without having to service the can. Got it. And so, and, and this is a maintenance item. This does have to be uh, drained. Uh, the oil that comes out of here gets drained into the same container as the engine oil that you drained out and then recycled. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's no difference there. It's just that you're, you're able to collect it before it gets back into the engine. And just imagine whatever you collect didn't end up on the intake valve and top of the piston and the cylinder and everywhere else. And actually, you know, it wasn't spent. It wasn't burnt. So it went back into the oil that we recycled. So actually pretty cool. We're going to go back and see one being made and put in a box. And the next video is going to be me putting one on actually Becky's Bronco first and then my Bronco. And let's see who collects the most oil and that'll tell who drives their Bronco the hardest. <laughs> mentioning vapor or oil catch can or oil separator whatever term you want to use but what what are we collecting what are we catching and so that and what are we catching and where does it come from well you know we're catching oil but it's atomized well what atomizes it and we're also catching more than oil so Vinny what's uh tell us just start you know from the beginning what are we collecting and why are we collecting sure so yeah it's atomized uh, oil because actually the oil separator is what the filter in it is what turns it back into oil because it's just like a, a film in the air and then the filter condenses and allows it to collect and then when you see in that can it's a mixture of oil, it's a mixture of fuel, it's moisture, it's all kinds of nasty stuff that you don't want in your intake tray. So the whole purpose of the PCV system is that you have a vacuum source on your crankcase that helps with engine efficiency, that helps with emissions, uh, a whole lot of things for being 50 state legal and all you know the current atmosphere of, uh, of vehicle manufacturing. So the byproduct, of course, of that is blow by and it being sucked into the crankcase. So um, this happens because you have your uh, 
you know, the crank, the, the rods, the pistons are moving very, very fast inside the motor. So you're getting a, uh, and they're going through the oil, you're getting a splash and foaming. And then what that does is the normal PCV system keeping that negative pressure keeps that at bay. But of course, then also draws in that, that vapor. Yeah, so drawing that vapor out of the, the crankcase and into the intake presents an issue when it's direct injection. See, yep. in an older or let's just say port injected engine, the fuel that is being introduced into the port is helping to wash the intake valve off of the carbon buildup. The carbon is comes from the oil, right? Yep. That is the vapor out of the PCV system. And then long term, you know, that buildup cokes onto the valve, it catches onto the valve, it affects airflow into the cylinder, which these things are precise. And when you know about how engines are ported and designed, and you'll know that buildup on an intake valve can interrupt that airflow. Also, it can affect how the valve seats. And so rough idle becomes a thing. Maybe you don't get uh, uh, proper compression because the valve's not seating right. And then even worse, what if some of those particles breaks off of the intake valve in a boosted engine in the right circumstances, there again, a lot of stuff has to happen, it can cause stuff like LSPI. It's a inexpensive part to install that requires maintenance when you do your oil changes. Yep. And it's like everything else. There's no fix all for anything in this world, but it's one step. It's that maintenance, it's that added protection, and it's definitely gonna help. Yep. One thing um, I like to talk with people about is that this isn't a performance mod. This is strictly a longevity reliability mod. Yeah. You're not going to bolt this on and say, wow, I noticed a difference. <laughs> but if I took two to five horsepower from you every year that you owned a vehicle, you would never notice the, the you would never notice that over time. But if I all of a sudden gave you those 30 foot pounds of torque or those 30 horsepower back, like when you got your valves cleaned, you're going to go, wow, where, where has all this been? Wow. Good point. Good point. Yeah. So it's slow, right? Yeah. It just, yeah, it, and that's a good point because um, if it's something that's going to happen, you know, overnight, obviously that's a big deal. But like you were just saying, I have never thought of it that way. Yeah. The other thing is the 2.7 is dual injection, mm -hmm. which gives it direct injection right into the cylinder. That's for efficiency and proper atomization of the fuel. But also it's port injected to help, I think, with this, maybe with some other performance ideas. Now the 2.3 is direct injection only, so you don't have the luxury of the fuel being fired into the intake. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Now yep. in the future that may change, but right now that's your reality. Yep. Uh, so I would I would think, you know, and I can't wait to install it. Absolutely. So every 5,000 miles, and by the way, I know what the owner's manual says, I'm not doing 10,000 miles between oil changes. Uh, we're doing every 5,000 miles. And quite frankly, if we run it really, really hard or in some heavy sandy conditions and I have any concerns, I'll change it when we get back. So it might not be every five, but generally speaking, that's the interval. So anything else that we need to know? The main difference in our, there's a lot of different options out there for catch cans, oil separators. Yeah. Uh, the biggest thing I can tell you about the JNL is that it's uh, made here and assembled in America. Uh, has a lifetime warranty on it. Also our oil separators, the good majority of them come fully assembled. So it makes it for a nice, quick and easy installation. And especially on the Broncos, there's no cutting or modifying of any of the factory part. And for 159 bucks, it's a very, very easy thing to do the vehicle that's gonna make your vehicle uh, cost you less money in the long run. A lot less than water blasting in the future. Yeah. Long term, you're gonna have vehicle maintenance, whether engines or brakes, tires, rear ends, whatever. Remember, this is just one more thing in helping with the longevity. You know, you talk about uh, atomization of oil. Mm -hmm different oil types can affect that. Sure. You know, uh, a big thing, obviously, people are huge, huge things at AMS oil. There's a great YouTube channel that does lots of testing in oil where they test it for how much evaporates at a certain temperature. Right. All that's gonna affect collection rate in your oil separator, but also if you didn't have an oil separator or, or you wanted to go a long period of time, running a good quality oil can uh, help significantly of keeping buildup down on those valves. Yeah, because base oil, unpredictable molecules, yeah. sizes and shapes and everything yeah. else can collect differently, right? Sure. So, um, of course, Ford uses a synthetic blend, which is a blend of base and synthetic oil, uh, much more uh, controllable as far as the quality of oil that you get. I think uh, you can go round and round on oil. I think there's nothing more important than changing it. Changing you know, it. changing on regular intervals. There's so many things that are in this motor that are oil fed between timing chain tensioners, the cam phasers, the turbos. Yeah. 
Um, I'm excited. I can't wait to install this on our Bronco. I do appreciate you, Vinny. No problem. Uh, thank you for allowing us to see the shop, to see this process. You know, we got to see the cans being uh, uh, put together and engraved. So putting the, the, the laser etching in there and actually assembling the components and putting it into the box. So when you receive yours and you unbox it, you know how it got there, where it came from, and now you know what to do with our install video, how to properly install one. And uh, who knows, maybe there'll be a, a special guest installing one of those. That would be pretty cool. But um, I can't wait to install it. I know what good it's gonna do for us. I'm super excited. Thanks for uh, allowing us to come out and take up some of your day. And uh, I know you got other stuff to do and other orders to fill. So we're out. Thanks for watching the video. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and give us that thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go to the bell icon, click all notifications. You'll know when we go live, when we post a video, and whatever other stuff that we get ourselves into. But stay tuned for the install video. This is going to be awesome. It's actually coming right after this. So pay attention. If you hit that bell icon, hit all notifications, you'll know when it goes live. So look forward to uh, that video and thanks for tuning in.